Washington. The slow pace of President Biden's re-election campaign has caused some concern among some top Democrats and party donors. They were already a bit nervous because of the potential threat of a third party candidate taking votes from Biden and potentially handing the election, they believe, to Donald Trump and therefore the keys to the White House for a second time. Joining me tonight is one of those third party candidates, Dr. Cornell West. He is running for the Green Party's 2024 nomination. Good evening, Dr. West, and thank you for joining us here on The Source. I mean, what do you believe is your path to success? Well, first, I just want to congratulate you on your show this week, and it's a blessing to be on your show. You're straight out of Plattsville, Alabama, <laughs> the home of Wilson Pickett. So we got two, two grand ones out of Plattsville. But no, my, <laughs> I, I don't talk so much about success in the narrow sense. I'm just trying to bear witness, Sister Caitlin. I'm trying to bear witness to the love and encourage and integrity that Irene and Clifton and Shiloh Baptist Church Black Panther Party put into me when I was shaped to be able to tell the truth about poor and working people because neither party wants to tell the truth about poor and working people. You look at, look, keep, keep track of these strikes, the Hollywood workers, keep track of the strikes of the Teamsters against UPS, keep track of the strikes in Amazon and see where both Democrats and Republicans come down. Keep track of the cluster bombs abroad. Keep track of the plight of Palestinians, both Democrats and Republicans on one side, and then there's a few of us on the other doing what? Keeping alive the legacy of Martin Luther King Jr., Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, Dorothy Day, and a host of others. So I'm just trying to speak the truth and pursue justice. I wish they would spend as much time focusing on the plight of poor and working people as they do focusing on the spoiler. I don't even like that category since so many of Folk who vote third party don't vote at all. What was it, 61%, I think, for Sister Jill said they would not vote at all if they didn't vote for her. So I think the Democratic Party and the Republican Party is this corporate duopoly. Uh, they stand in the way of focusing on poor and working people both here and abroad. And that's all I'm, that's all I'm doing in this campaign. It's part of a moment in a movement, moment in a movement. I'm glad you brought up Jill Stein because you know the counter argument here. Jill Stein's actually helping you with this run. And seven years ago, when she was the Green Party candidate, Hillary Clinton's world blamed her in part for that loss. And Democrats are worried you're going to play that role this time around. So what do you say to people, to Democrats, who are worried you'll, you'll tip the election for Donald Trump? When I just say that, it's simply not true. I mean, I have great respect. I have great respect for my dear brother Ralph Nader. I have great respect for Sister Jill Stein. I have great respect for my dear brother Jamu Baraka. Meaning what? Meaning that the Democratic Party is so unsocratic as well as undemocratic. I'm still upset because they didn't treat my dear brother Bernie right twice. But they're unsocratic. Examine yourself. Examine why it is you did not speak to the issues of poor and working people, and therefore you lost. If you'd rather lose than really change and examine yourself, then you're going to have third parties popping up all over the place because people are suffering out here. You got mass incarceration, you got ghettos and hoods and barrios and reservations. You got 60% of our fellow citizens barely making it every month. And what's the, what's the di discourse? We want to win the next election and we're concerned about the spoiler. Hey. I thought you were concerned about public life. I thought you were concerned about the quality of the life of citizens. And I speak as a Christian, which is the least of these, the 25th chapter of Matthew, the orphans, the widow, the fatherless, the motherless, the marginalized, the subjugated. That's my legacy. That's the legacy that I attempt to enact in my own fallible way as a crack vessel. Yeah, so you're saying essentially you think that Democrats, well, not just Democrats, but that they have the wrong message. If you're if you're looking at this, at the election, it comes down to the wire. You're polling at, say, 2 or 3% in key battleground states. You know, what do you do? Do you ultimately back President Biden like you did in 2020? Or what would you do in that scenario, do you think? Well, I mean, part of the challenge, my dear sister, is that, you know, you got Trump. He's certainly a gangster, neo-fascist. He's in many ways, uh, promoting, if not, not promoting, that's too strong a word. But one effect of his work is to move toward a second civil war. With Biden, he's better in some ways on domestic issues, but he's leading us toward a third world war. So if we choose between the second civil war and the third world war, where are we? We're between Iraq and a hard place, and that's where so many of us 
find ourselves unable to really acknowledge the ways in which our system itself is just so toxic. You know, the organized greed at the top, just hemorrhaging the best, the, the, the indifference, the levels of hatred and revenge. All I'm doing is saying is, hey, let us try another way that Fannie Lou Hamer already taught us, which is one of love and justice and community and solidarity with the least of these and organizing and having strikes against organized greedy bosses and then trying to somehow keep our dem democracy alive and dismantle the empire. See, I want to head the empire in order to dismantle it. We don't need 800 military units around the world. We don't need U.S. troops in over 100 countries. We need to be a nation among nations. We don't need to be the grand empire that every nation has to bow down to. I'm anti-empire, anti-imperialist in that sense, very much like Mark Twain well, and the most adorable American philosopher, William James. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought up NATO because you tweeted earlier this week that you believe NATO is what provoked Russia into invading Ukraine. As you know, that is the argument President Putin makes and one that the U.S. forcefully rejects. You know, I know that you don't think the U.S. should be involved, but if you got elected, what would you accept in terms of a ceasefire in Ukraine? Well, one, I've got my massive critiques of Putin, though. There's no doubt about it. But mm -hmm. we're not talking about personalities here. We're talking about how the United States promised Gorbachev, towering statesman, that they would not move one inch toward Russia. And we end up right now 800 miles on the border of Russia. And we know how empires behave, Sister Caitlin. If Russia had missiles in Mexico and Canada, the United States government would probably blow them to smithereens because that's how empires behave. We had the same challenge in Cuba in 1962. So what we end up in with a criminal invasion. And I know some of my left-wing comrades who know it's an invasion. Criminal invasion, but a criminal invasion provoked by the expansion of NATO, which is an instrument of U.S. global power. And we have to be able to conceive of a world when, when we look at China, when we look at Russia, when we look at Ethiopia, when we look at Haiti, when we look at Brazil, we got to see precious human beings rather than these competitive nation states that are trying to devour more profits, more land, and more territory. Can we conceive of such a world? Can we pursue such a world? I think we have to. What's at stake? The destruction of the species, the destruction of the planet, the destruction of democracies as we know it. But so we're cutting against the grain, but always with a smile. Practically speaking, what would you what would you accept in Ukraine? Like what? I mean, Trump claims he could fix it oh, in 24 well, hours. Could, what would that look like for you? Oh, what I would do, I would bring in the Chinese, the Turks, the African rulers. I would sit down with the Ukrainian leaders and say, we must stop this war, stop these war crimes, the cluster bombs on a variety of different parties and make sure that we begin a diplomatic process for a just peace. And that just peace is going to have some serious concessions across the board. Russian troops have to leave. There's going to be debates over the territory. There are going to be some kind of concessions over the territory, but stop the killing. Why? Because the Ukrainian brothers and sisters are precious and they are bearing so much of the suffering with this proxy war between the American empire and the Russian Federation. So there's responsibility and blame across the board, but the American empire does bear a significant responsibility mm -hmm. here, even though it's not the sole or exclusive responsibility, and it's in no way a pro-Putin. People say, oh, you must be siding with Putin. No, please. No, not at all. I'm trying to be morally consistent. I want to be a person that has some integrity and honesty and critique, self-critique and critique of others in a spirit of fallibility. Okay, but you said serious concessions across the board. We'll have more questions on that next time we have you on. Dr. Cornell West, thank you for joining us thank here you. tonight. Thank you so much, my dear sisters. Stay strong. Speaking of a potential third, maybe fourth party candidate, former Maryland governor,